The mission today is to sharpen your swords and get you ready for battle. It's time to fine tune your craft and make you the best in what you do. The mission is to equip you to help anyone purchase what they need. We'll share the best advice from the best in their industry. You'll be listening to a conversation you wish you had with the mentors you wish you had. Take what makes sense to you and makes you better in your career. You guys, Bruce Lee said it best. Absorb what is useful and discard what is not. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Commission Mission. My name is Eric Gerace. I'm Micah Henderson, and I'm super psyched to introduce our guest today, Bill Cates, the referral coach, uh, the my online mentor that I never got to meet until now. Uh, Bill, thanks for your time. Thanks for coming on today. Hey, you bet. And just in case people missed it, it's not Bill Gates. <laughs> yeah. uh, he, right? <laughs> he just he, he just said that right before we get done here. Um, and uh, but no, really, thank you for your time that um, from from the, the get go in my career, right out of college, getting started with the large company, uh, I was given a, a CD box set of the referral coach. And mm -hmm. that was my first chance to start attempting to get better at what I do. And the, the way your approach was just in general, not, not just in, um, kind of doing role plays of, of acting as if you were speaking to a client, uh, talking about referrals, but just your approach in general was very, um, you know, very polished, very smooth. Um, you know, n not, not aggressive, uh, you know, just, a. a uh, you know, a comfortable conversation. And that's what I've always strived to, to accomplish in, in, in my own business. Um, thank you. I mean, it's, it's sometimes the words we say really do matter, don't they? Uh, they have to be comfortable and fluid. Uh, I don't know. I don't want ever want to sound slick, Yeah, but smooth, fluid, comfortable, confident, and very important. And I've always prided myself at being a little bit of a wordsmith, you know, figuring out, how would I actually say that? Um, and I found when I give people the right language, then it opens them up to a strategy that maybe they weren't considering before. That's right. And and you do walk that line very well. And, and I, I was talking, and we had a conversation just prior to just the about that, about, about that, the word slick, you just used that you, you do want um, to be clear and you want to be good at what you do, but there gets to a point where, you know, with me, I'm, I'm not so polished. Uh, I do have a lot of us and it, there'll be a stutter every now and again, but it, once all that is removed, you don't want to come across as a smooth talker and, and somebody puts a guard up because of that, that right. you're going to be tricked into a, 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 a service or a product that, that you don't really want because this guy's so good. But I, I think you, you walk that very well and you come across as authentic and genuine when, when, uh, when you're doing it. Thank you. Good. Uh, one subject that is really universal and, and comes up a lot is the, the subject of relationships and building trust and building rapport with people. Uh, you bring it up because of how important that is when it comes to referrals. Um, if you went and uh, tried to have the referral conversation with someone that didn't know you, didn't trust you, didn't like you, that conversation would not go over so smooth. Well, if they didn't like you, didn't trust you, first of all, you probably wouldn't be having a meeting with them in the first place. Or, or at least get the business. You wouldn't be getting <laughs> the business at the end. Yeah. So here, here's what we found around that. Um, some studies that, that some other folks have done and I've done, we found that there's actually a low correlation between satisfied clients and providing referrals, making introductions. What we need is what we'll call engaged clients. And so therefore an engaged relationship. And all right, what does that mean? It means we've made a value connection. They like the things we teach, the things we, the questions we ask, uh, a lot of ways to different to bring value, right? Responsive service, et cetera. Uh, and then we've made a personal connection. Um, you know, like you said, they kind of like us at least enough, trust us a little bit, the trust is building. And that's important throughout the entire relationship from the very beginning, you meet someone throughout however long your relationships last with clients or customers. And so we, we're always thinking, how do we connect with value? How do we connect uh, from some sort of a personal level? And when you have that engaged relationship, these are the people they will do business with you, they will stay with you, and they will give you referrals. In the study, 98% of engaged clients 
in, uh, engaged in the referral process and, and making introductions. So you got to go beyond that satisfaction and that's loyalty. That's a really levels. important statistic. 98%. That, that's a big fraction, everybody. <laughs> um, so you really do have it down to uh, the science. And, a little bit. <laughs> well, and, and everybody doesn't have to do the studies themselves. Everybody who's in sales or, or you know starting a business watching the show – but you should listen to the people who have done the studies and have uh, put in the time and the effort to to get it down to to a science. Um, sure. And and I don't as much as I used to do in home uh, appointments. But the advantage to that was I, I got to see their environment, their world. I got to see uh, their 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 pictures with their family. Uh, the, the, you know, in in the boat. Uh, you know, or, or uh, the the favorite team on the wall. And that is uh, an easy segue into knowing what's important to them and starting that conversation, making things comfortable, and uh, making that personal connection. Yeah, let me give you a little tip on that too. Is is the, it depends a little bit on on the model of business you have, but if if your clients, customers come to your place of work, come to your office or whatever it might look like, having photographs of you with the other clients, uh -huh. having photographs of if you do any kind of client appreciation events, uh, you know, picnics, barbecues, whatever it might be golf outings, uh, having a few pictures of those up. This is, this goes into that, that, uh, umbrella of, uh, social proof that we all know about and how important that is, but it also shows the kind of relationships that you have with other clients, customers, that they are, that they're budding business friendships, if you will. It's more than just the, the, you know, client salesperson, if you will, a relationship. And so that, that, it's another way to kind of promote, plant the seed, show the culture of engaged clients. That's that, that's awesome, and I've I've heard that and, and thought about that, and, and uh, having a customer appreciation event with uh, several generations of referrals, and and that it's friends all getting together at that point when oh, yeah. when everybody yeah. knows each other. Uh, Bill, how do you feel? And, and we were just talking about uh, people coming to the office, or you going to somebody's home and and, and doing a sales appointment there. Uh, has the the recent uh, pandemic? hurt that in uh, building relationships and building rapport uh, from being with people face to face. And if yeah. that's had an effect on building relationships, does that have an effect on your ability to ask for referrals? It, it did initially, and it probably still does for some people. What I found is as, as salespeople, professionals, all the different types of folks listen to your show uh, and the customers, clients, prospects have gotten more and more and more increasingly comfortable with Zoom and go to meeting and all the other various ones, uh, that it's become less of an issue. Um, one of the things that it's impacted is the, the length of the meetings and sometimes meetings are shorter now. Uh, some people prefer a zoom meeting. I like my financial advisor. Uh, you know, we do, uh, we meet four times a year and, uh, the last one we did in person, the one we did before I wasn't feeling well that day. So we did a zoom. The next one's going to be a zoom. I actually like that sometimes saves a drive, saves time. So that's all good. But sometimes those meetings are a little shorter. So we don't always have quite the time that we've had. So we've got to manage that process. We've got to make sure that people set aside enough time to have the right types of conversations. And, and we know some people just aren't comfortable with this and they don't know how to have their camera set up and they got terrible sound and lighting. Um, that's still going on. Most of us is, have learned how to become TV producers now. <laughs> you get a good right. mic. You know. Even my 75 year old mother right? is pretty well adept at Zoom now. It's pretty amazing. Yes. So there's no question it's had an impact. Uh, it's, but not with everybody. Some people are doing really, really well. Uh, some people have always done virtual, even before COVID. I have. Um, uh, I, I've definitely yeah. done, um, you know, when, when you're in the financial services industry and you can be licensed in many states, I right. can I can help somebody with uh, a life insurance policy in Atlanta and then an hour later, a long term care policy in Miami. No uh, question. The, the, we're seeing that the geographic reach. Uh, people's businesses has, has expanded in a lot of cases. Yeah, but I, I can really feel the lack of uh, 
you know, personal connection with those relationships. And as much as I don't want them to be transactional, I want to be their guy in many areas of their life, uh, you know, that I, that I work in. Um, I I think it would just come to maybe increasing follow up on the back end to make up for, uh, you know, not having the, the rapport building on the front end. To, to show my value, to show, uh, you know, my commitment to them as a client. Yeah. See, in coaching, yep. in my coaching business and real estate business, that's, we pivoted, I was using, um, zoom and, and video tours before the pandemic, but when the pandemic sure. hit yeah. our open house strategy went away, you know, we couldn't have massive amounts of people in a, in one location at one time. And, but what we started doing was we realized, yes, we can virtually. So, um, I would go to the house, do the open house and be live on zoom and people could ask questions and things like that. And one of the things I realized when I was on zoom with people is you are in their living room, a lot of times in their bedroom, <laughs> you know, so you're a little bit more personal than if you were to walk to their house. Yeah. Um, true. and yeah. so it's time to do laundry over there. I see that, <laughs> but it, it helps you. It helps you understand your client. I think by by the surrounding. If and in, in, in a case where they're uncomfortable with the technology, then that's where you can step up as yet another value add to the relationship with this person on walking them through and helping them become an expert in what they're uncomfortable with. So there's a lot of advantages to it. I think. Micah, you, you said something. There. I had a call this morning already with a, a prospective coaching client for me. And we're just having a good, good natured, humorous conversation. And I said to him, you know, I said, by the way, uh, that client call you got coming up in a few minutes, uh, make sure you move your trash can or empty that <laughs> trash can, right? Cause it was overflowing with coffee cups. Yeah. And stuff. Good catch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, I'll, I'll tell somebody if they got something in their teeth, there's, you know, something hanging out, you know, that uh, I'd rather you hear it from me, even though, you know, I'm a complete stranger. It's probably more comfortable that way, but I, I'm not going to let you go the whole day with that in your teeth. And then you thinking, man, you get, my, my, my wife, my family, my friends let, you know, didn't even catch that for me. So, um, yeah, it's, it, it, cool. <laughs> um, so, so at this point you, you've built a relationship and you're moving into referrals. I would be remiss. I would be doing my, you know, watchers, a disservice if if we didn't uh, go over referrals, and uh, so yeah. this is really for Micah again. So. <laughs> there, it's all for me. It, it it is all for me, but I know there's other people out there at, wondering the same questions. So um, you got to go into that with confidence, and you if you've done your job right up until then, you, you shouldn't have any other reason but to have confidence that you've. Uh, you know, come to the meeting prepared and uh, uh, acknowledge what, what they wanted to acknowledge, solve that problem. Um, and you've shown the value. So you should right. be going into this, uh, with, with confidence. Um, but it should it be the same confidence that you had the, the, the whole appointment or should you turn it up or turn, turn it down? Is it, is it more comfortable? The pressure's off now, or, or should you, you know, finish strong? Um, Highland finance, helping you prepare for life. IRS takes your money, stock market risks your money, and inflation reduces the buying power. At Highland Finance, we believe you should feel confident in your future. Our proven track record helps our clients prepare for life. Call 850-359-5989. Oh, I, I, I strongly believe that your the way you talk about referrals slash introductions uh, should always be done with confidence, uh, with importance. We treat it with importance. Why? Because the work you do, the value you provide deserves to be treated with importance. Bringing the work you do, the value that you provide to other folks, that's important. Uh, you know that how you put things out there uh, kind of determine how they'll come back, right? If you're kind of weak, wishy-washy. I mean, Eric, you don't happen to know one else who's, uh, you know, could use my services. I mean, if you could think of someone, that'd be great. If you, if you can't, that's okay. You know, I, I think I made you feel uncomfortable. I, I, I know I made myself feel uncomfortable. Yeah. Why don't we forget we had this conversation? Right? So, <laughs> that was like the um, phone call Mike had got just before this episode. Where just, was- just before this episode, we were, um, I got a phone call and it, it was from a local number. So I answered it. It may be a client for with a new phone number. It may be um, a, a referral. So I at least want to acknowledge that their call. Hey, uh, I, you know, give me a chance to call you back in an hour or two. Well, yeah. it, it was a, um, I, I guess, a wholesaler for an insurance company. I'm not going to uh, doom justice by naming them, but um I was like, hey, you know, I, I 
really have a lot of great uh, uh, companies already that I'm contracted with um, and, and I'm kind of busy right now. Can we set up a time a little later? And you would think that would open the window for him to say, yes, I want to talk to you about uh, how great our products are, the better compensation, the you know laid back underwriting in these specific areas and we have great software, right? No, this guy was like, you know what? I didn't even want to talk to you about uh, contracts. Uh, you know what? Don't worry about it. Have a good day. And hung up on me. I was like, seriously, hey, this guy seriously. needs to watch the commission it, mission. It was because exactly what not to do. Exactly what not to do. <laughs> Any type of sales. Call. So I, I texted him back the the website to the show. <laughs> <laughs> this guy needs to watch a couple of these episodes because because well, and let me finish the thought real quick about this confidence thing. There, there's a fine line between being confident and being pushy. Yeah. No, we don't push anyone into a conversation around possible introductions. That word shouldn't be in your vocabulary around this. It shouldn't come across as this. And we can talk a little bit about how you do that. But confident, yes. Pushy, assumptive, no. You can be a little soft and still be confident at the same time. Uh, and I can demonstrate, we can talk about that, but I, I have to tell you, I got an email this, uh, no, I'm sorry, a LinkedIn message this morning, um, from someone, I had a client in a mic podcast, uh, describe LinkedIn as a new cold calling. <laughs> and in a lot of cases, it's true. Not always. Uh, but uh, th this was, and I told her that I said, you know, sending me a generic, unpersonalized message is pretty much the same thing as a cold call. Now I haven't heard back from her yet. I don't know if it will. <laughs> She's probably got some assistance somewhere just copying and pasting, copying, and pasting, copying, and pasting, you know, it, it, you, you don't go, it, it, it's not a relevant message. Right. And so it's not going to work. It's but doing, anyway, doing a shotgun back to approach. the referral thing. Yeah. yeah and, be, and be confident, uh, be confident, but not aggressive. And, and that was always how you came across. And that's why I, I gravitated towards, you know, I, I need to uh, uh, take a page from this guy's book. Um, but, you know, in, instead of saying, what's your, uh, you know, um, What's your mom's, you know, you know, number? What's your dad's contact information? I, I need to talk to them. Um, you know, making it come across more genuine and authentic, and saying, "Hey, if I gave value to you," and then borrowing that that trust to go from uh, the the person that you've built the trust with to the 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 mutual person that you know, and just borrowing that trust long enough so you can make it yourself with, with, right. with the new person, um, right. and. Uh, the idea is to replicate your ideal clients, right? Uh, Correct. Bill, you oh. are my ideal guest. Uh, you know, <laughs> you are. Who, if you would allow me just for a minute to brainstorm with you, who do you think that you know that would enjoy coming on this show and be mutually beneficial and uh, it brings the same great quality? There's a, there's something hauntingly familiar about what you just did. <laughs> That's right. No, but seriously, um, you know, if, if you want to, <laughs> pull your phone out and start giving me some, see, that's what you want to do. And that's what you don't want to do. Um, but the show is definitely about people, uh, early on figuring things out and early mm -hmm. on, I couldn't really be picky. I couldn't be choosy. Every client that was signing on the dotted line was my ideal client. And that really did show because and I've told you before, I've never once failed to ask for a referral, even if it is hitting them with the, you know, just if there's anybody that, that uh, I can help with what I do, don't keep me a secret at, at bare minimum that. But when I'm replicating, not my A clients, and I'm just replicating any client that ended up being a, a C uh, or D client. Uh, my my practice, my business really showed that I was in, in a lot of um, ways spinning my wheels the same way I was spinning my wheels with the person who referred me to you. Um, so how do you early on really focus, you know, find those A clients, classify them mm -hmm. as A clients and reproduce mm -hmm. them when you can't be that picky because you're trying to pay your bills? Well, uh, it's a bit of a dichotomy, isn't it? Um, and a lot of times when you are just getting started in a business, uh, you don't even really need to be that picky and, and, unless it's the only 
unless there's a certainly defined uh, qualities, demographic, psychographic aspects of a good client that you, you have to stay with. Uh, but, you know, a lot of people, uh, when you're brand new, sometimes activity for activity sake is good for a while, not forever. Uh, but for a while, um, cold calling, lead programs, all those other things. Uh, I don't say don't do those things. Let's just wean ourselves away from those things as quickly as we possibly can. So a lot of folks that are new in business, you know, the company generates leads from the Internet, lots of different types of ways to do that. Yeah, you may need that for a while. Um, there's a difference between good leads and bad leads. But let's wean ourselves away from that by, you know, let's say third year, give or take. Um now, how do we how do we do it faster? How do we try to uh, uh, you know get referred or introduced to the folks who really do fit the ideal profile? A few ways. First of all, when you are working with someone who does fit your ideal profile, let them know that. Let them know how and why they do. What are the characteristics that they have that they brought to the party that that is good is good for the work you do. Right. It's not necessarily about you and who you're looking for. Well, that's OK. It's about who who benefits the most from your process. Right. Who benefits the most from the work you do? That's that's the perspective we really want to take. And so let them know that and let them know you're never too busy to see if you can be a resource for other people. Now, notice I said, see if you can be a resource. That's a qualifier. Right. Never too busy to see if I can be a resource for folks you care about. I may be able to help them. I may be the right person for them. I may not, but I'm happy to have a quick conversation, see if it makes sense. Right? So we're teaching our referral sources who fit and not just our, our clients or customers, but, you know, those centers of influence. Uh, Ivan Meisner, the founder of uh, BNI Business Net Network, Network International, calls them the contact spheres. Every industry has the natural contact spheres in financial service. Certainly it's the CPAs, the accountants, uh, state planning attorneys and other folks like that. But, you know, you got to work that side of it as well. And how do you get referrals from those people? Well, you got to become referable. They got to feel really good about the value you provide. And that often doesn't happen in the first conversation. Sometimes it takes time to earn that that likability, that trust, that engagement uh, before they're going to send people your way. It's great to give referrals, but just because you give referrals to someone doesn't necessarily make you referable if they don't fully understand and appreciate your value. Uh, in fact, that's that's one of the challenges I had when I first got started doing this 30 years ago, is I would teach people how to ask, how to ask without looking like that cheesy referral guy, right? Uh, how to do it without begging or pushing. And I learned a lot of folks, particularly the newer folks, weren't quite yet referable yet. They hadn't really established the relationships with folks. So we certainly have to work on that. Uh, another thing you've got to do when you're new is you've got to get to that point of belief in your value as quickly as you possibly can. Uh, a lot of folks kind of intellectually understand their value. They've been their managers, whatever, have taught them. Here's the value of what we do. And here's how our clients benefit. That's great. We understand it intellectually. But if we don't really truly get it in our gut, then it's hard to be proactive. It's hard to try to get that value out to other people and make it about that. I've talked to people who've been in business for a long time and they wonder if they're referable. They wonder about the value I've had people come up to me and say, Bill, you know, I'm, my clients love me, but I, I'm not getting any referrals, any introductions. You know, what am I doing wrong? I said, well, let's go back to that. My clients love me first. Right. Because if you have good, solid relationships with at least some clients, you should be getting unsolicited referrals. Everybody in business should be getting unsolicited referrals, referrals if without not, asking. Yeah. Referrals without. Mm -hmm. If you're not getting at least some, you know, what is some? It's a relative term, obviously, but. If you're not getting any, then you're not referable. Yeah. And and I've, I've got a guy I've been coaching lately, and that's a big part of his issue is he hasn't really built the relationships to get him uh, to the point of earning the right to that. But re uh, referrals without asking, you know, I mean, that that 
uh, so huge, so simple, but so huge. And, uh, you know, getting that by simply doing your job well, uh, in, and giving value to somebody so that, uh, when they have somebody in their sphere of influence that needs that same value that you, you come to mind right away. Uh, another thing that I, I wanted to point out, um, is when you say that you're never too busy, you're, uh, getting in front uh, of an objection that somebody, you know, instead of having that conversation with them, how come you never sent me a referral? Oh, and you know, you're a busy guy. I, I, I you know, I, I didn't want to bother you with, with somebody who might just be kicking the tires. When you say, Hey, I'm never too busy. You're taking that off the table. I'm never too busy. Um, so, uh, something again, so small, but you know, very important to let people know. Yes. And, and again, those words to see if I can be, yeah. if you're brand new in business and a lot of your folks are newer, um, you know, never too busy to be a resource, mm -hmm. never too busy to talk to anyone, never too busy. Right. But once you start to get that at a point, um, where not everyone is a good match and that could be from day one too. never too busy to see if I can be a resource. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it's always good if you can, to have other resources maybe related to the work that you do, but doesn't, but you know, they'll take on clients, customers that maybe you won't for whatever reasons. Uh, so you can turn them on to someone else. Yeah. Uh, and so then, they're still getting helped, but not by you and not wasting your time or their time. Uh, th that that's, that's really good. And, and the other idea that I wanted to share with anybody is just kind of like the idea of, of referring up and, and, yes. you know, by, by that, I just mean, uh, when, when you're asking these questions, um, and you have somebody that, that's, you know, uh, receptive to giving referrals, instead of asking for your barber, you're asking for their doctor, right? You know, you're, you're, you're trying to get somebody that may be in a better position for you to help them, uh, uh, you know, and, and that's all that really is. Um, but yeah, the idea of referring up. So, um, and, and, uh, and in my real estate, <clears throat> excuse me, in my real estate business, instead of shooting from the hip on these referrals like this, one of the tools that, that my partner and I put together early on was, defining our ideal client avatar, like what they look like and being as specific as possible with that. Yes. Um, yes. Um, because it makes that referral ask a lot easier. Hey, this is the type of clients that we're looking for. Boom. And when you have that um, understanding of who mm -hmm. your ideal client is, it makes it really easy for you to spend time with those ideal clients and kind of wean away from the ones that, that aren't. So we have, yeah. we have the relationship, we have the ideal, uh, uh, client in mind. Um, mm -hmm. how do we motivate people? How do we get people to act? Um, uh, you know, how do we want people to give referrals? Well, I have a, I have, I have a tool. Let me, can I get the tool? Yeah. Let me just, just give me one second. All oh, right. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is my favorite part of the episode. It's, it's like, a hammer. I, I have, I, have I knew a tool. it. <laughs> it's a um, hammer. <laughs> A big, huge claw hammer. <laughs> oh, it's a rubber He's... hammer. <laughs> it looks real, though, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> it does. I, was, oh, I didn't know what was happening for a second. Uh. <laughs> no. Give me that referral. Yeah. No. Um, <laughs> so uh, let's see where to start. The, the, first, the first thing is that you want to make sure value is indeed being recognized, right? Are we at least moving in the path towards becoming referable? So there's a couple ways you know this. First of all, you want to pay attention to value recognizing statements. In other words, these are things that prospects, clients, customers say to us. Thanks for explaining that. To us. Thanks for going to bat. Always feel better after we meet you know, whatever, uh, and pay attention and turn your radar and tune your radar into these people saying good thoughts, a value recognizing statement. Okay. What do I do with that? Right. And you may just say, thank you. Glad I got a happy client. Or you might say, great. Glad you're seeing value. You know, please don't keep the work I do a secret out there. Don't keep me a secret. Don't keep us a secret. Never too busy to see a lot of different ways to promote plant the seed for introductions. Um, and then we teach what, what I call the value discussion. Uh, some of my clients call it the value check-in. Some people have renamed it an expectations check. But what we're doing is we're checking in to make sure they are indeed seeing the value. You know, we covered a lot of things so far. We've been through a process to get to this point. Tell me the value feel you've gotten so far, right? We want, we yeah. want to let them talk about the value to us. It does a couple of things, three things, really. First of all, 
it helps us learn. It helps us see how what we do and how we talk about what we do land on other people, right? How do, how are they responding? And we find that, you know, we think we're bringing value here and we said this and they're going to love it, but it's actually something else got triggered, right? So we learn that. When they talk it out to us, rather than just keep it inside, then they get more in touch with it. That value that they're feeling becomes more real. And then we feel better about the next step because they're feeling good about this, right? So that value check-in, expectations check, very important in, in the process. And then finally, uh, we're going to kind of shortcut my process a little bit here, but the bullseye in asking. The, the easiest, most efficient, usually the most successful way to do this is to suggest very specific people or categories you know that they know. Right. So the, the big mistake that a lot of people make, I've made this mistake from time to time over the, over the year. Who do you know we can help? It's too big. Who do you know should too be aware general. of the work we do. Right. Too general throws up in the whole universe. We're trying to get them to picture people in their mind's eye. Right. Um, so by individuals, if you're doing your job, in most cases, by the time you get to this, you're going to know about some other people in their life that, Maybe they're active in their industry association or the work you do, it's personal type. So, you know, about friends, family, parents, children, whatever. Right. So any specific people, that's that's the bullseye. That's the best place. Now, a very close second would be categories of the folks that are going through situations that might put the work you do on their radar. Yeah. So a couple of examples. Uh, I listened to one of your podcasts. The guy was uh, sell, sold motorcycles, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Chadillac. What's his name? He had a cool name. Chadillac. 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 Yeah. Uh, the, sells the Cadillac of motorcycles. <laughs> yeah. <right? laughs> and so anyway, um, so what would that question look like? Well, you know, uh, buddies who ride, other people ride. Yeah. Anybody know you're shopping for a new bike or just you get to know people. You just learn, you schmooze. And by the time you're done, you got a couple of places to go with that. Amazing. Right? And one of or, the things or, I got from your process that you just explained, yeah. I think that a lot of new uh, people miss was how much active listening you have to do through this process. We ask oh, yeah. the question and then we let the client respond and we don't interrupt. We don't throw in our two cents. We listen and we listen and we listen and we take notes on what they're saying. And we, and then when they're done, we, we respond. And I think that's so, so important for new people because we're nervous. We're not as confident. And, right. and, and, yeah. and so we, we start to jump ahead, but it's so important. Right. To we listen. got our list of things we want to cover. So we ask the question, then we're thinking about the next question we're going to ask. And we don't realize they just gave us the names yeah. of two or three or four people that <laughs> could be viable prospects for the work that so, we do. You know, absolutely uh, amazing information given us today. Um, I, I do I want people to, to get the same out of uh, your coaching as, as I got. And, and, and it's got me so far. How can people get in, in touch with you? Um, website, you know, uh, your books, I, you know, um, where can they find those? Where, where, where can people get the, the best information from you? Well, I appreciate that. First of all, uh, well, my website, referralcoach.com, referralcoach.com. Uh, we also have a, a kind of a, a guide that I created that merges a lot of my things around referrals and how we talk about our value proposition. And if you just go to Exponential Growth Guide, dot com exponential growth guide dot com uh, you know you'll get that it's free free but valuable i like Very to say valuable. Uh, <laughs> uh, so those are two main places and just there's ways to get in touch with me and just check out we got a lot of free re let me give you one more uh referralcoach.com forward slash resources mm -hmm. referralcoach.com forward slash resources and a lot of free and valuable stuff there, scripts, videos, audios, a lot, of, a lot of ways to get in my world, and hopefully you'll find value. Everybody, you are doing yourself a disservice if you do not take <laughs> Bill up on on everything that he just named and listed for you guys. Uh, mm -hmm. Bill, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, did not disappoint. Um, I, I uh, yeah. I, I hate I, that these episodes go by so fast, man. They, I have so many more questions. I know. Well, <laughs> like my, my one awesome question, information up. <laughs> the, the, the one question I had prepared really did spur like five other questions, but um, <laughs> there, there, there's always next time. Um, 
yeah. Uh, thanks for your time. And uh, I hope we, we speak again in the future. Yeah. Uh, you guys do great work. Thanks. Thank thanks you, a lot, Bill. Bill. Bye. I don't know how anybody doesn't know who Bill Cates is. And uh, when I talk uh, uh, about how how good he is and how much uh, uh, value that he brings to the anybody's table, y- you now you know what I'm talking about after you've watched this episode. That uh, and we did just kind of talk about. Uh, referrals from a, a high level to, to a, a specific overview, but um, you know he he's a coach and, and a, a trainer and a speaker and a mentor all on top of that. Um, so if you're struggling in this area, those resources he gave us in this show, reach out, look at those up, referralcoach.com slash forward slash resources. Absolutely. Um, definitely check those out because, um, like I said, Micah and I had the advantage of when we joined a, a insurance company that they provided a, a, a disc set, training set um, from Bill. Mm-hmm. And so we had the, the uh, awesome opportunity of listening to him and, and learning how to not keep ourselves a secret and ask for referrals. Mm-hmm. And it's just amazing, amazing, uh, well high value. Oh, yeah. And, because and- when, when you start getting clients uh, through referrals, um, your marketing budget doesn't have to be as big, you right. know, and you don't have to field as many and the conversion rate, kickers. Yeah, the conversion rate is so much higher to so much less uh, of, a, of a time and money budget, yep. right? It's, it's uh, the most efficient way that you can get business and to uh, make that process even more efficient in any sales job, any uh, uh, career, th- you're going to want to do that. And so specifically get training on this area and Bill Cates is the guy. Yes. Um, you know, there's a statistic with, with, uh, Limra in, in my industry, the financial services industry, that 95% of everybody, uh, quits before year one. Uh, but if you can make it through year five, the statistic flips and if you make it through, 95% of the people will stay okay. in the industry. Um, I think if everybody starting off got the Bill Cates uh, uh, referral coach, that would change the t- statistic a little bit. Um, of course, if everybody watched the commission mission, that would also change the statistic a <laughs> little bit better. Um, but I'm partial. I'm a little biased on that one. Um, anyways, everybody, thanks for viewing. Thanks for coming and, and sitting with us. Uh, I hope you got as much out of it as I know I did. We'll see you next episode. Thank you. you. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this episode of The Commission Mission. I hope you got a lot out of it. We need you guys to like, follow, subscribe, whatever that action is for the platform that you're watching it on. And please leave a review. That's a great way of giving us a compliment. And if you're listening to this show and you're interested in working with a great team in either the financial industry or real estate, uh, Mike and I have opportunities available for people to join our team. You can uh, find us at livingthatcommissionlife.com and go to the Join Us tab. Highland Finance, helping you prepare for life. The profit your business brings in should go to you, not accidents, injuries, and hurricanes. Do a policy review on your general liability and workers' comp today. Our proven track record helps our clients prepare for life. Call 850-359-5989. Island Finance.